Hello and welcome to video number four of the advanced course for NADEN. In this video, we'll be covering sub workflows, the secret to making your NADEN operations a lot more scalable, but also increasing the speed of workflow building. So the first topic we need to cover is, you know, what is a sub workflow? The execute workflow node allows you to call one workflow from another, allowing you to either execute multiple workflows back to back, or extract a part of a workflow into its own dedicated workflow. For example, this workflow has a group of nodes that are used to look up a user in a database, everything here that is covered by the node. We could replace this with a sub workflow. From a technical point of view, it executes the chosen NADN workflow, by taking its input data and outputting it from the when called by another workflow trigger. This workflow will then execute item by uh, node by node, item by item, and the items from the final node of the workflow are returned to the original workflow. So here in this diagram, the output data from edit fields would go into the execute workflow. This would then be used as input data for the execute workflow trigger. And when this workflow is done executing, it'll take the items from the last node of the workflow and use it as output data for the execute workflow node. And then it'll just continue in the original workflow. So the sub workflow pretty much allows us to extract a set of nodes from a given workflow and make it into its own workflow. But why is that useful? There are some sets of actions that you will often have to do in multiple different workflows. For example, enriching information about a person, looking someone up in a database, looking up a certain order number in a table. And creating a sub workflow allows you to abstract a more complex task, allowing everyone to use the right method simply by calling the sub workflow. This also makes maintenance a lot easier. If you need to update the enrichment process, or if you need to add a new table in the lookup, it can be done once and the updated version will be used across all workflows that call it. There are two important things to note when using sub workflows. First, be sure to use a standard format for key names or embedded JSON object structures. If the input data has a key email with an uppercase E, but the sub workflow reads a key email with a lowercase E, the sub workflow will fail. Here we can see the output data has a capital or uppercase E and the sub workflow is checking for a lowercase E. The output data of the execute workflow node would also be the output data of the last node of the workflow. So be mindful of which node is the last one in your workflow what the different values of the keys are, and if you need to join the input data or not. So to illustrate how a sub workflow works, um, we're going to use this um, little workflow that I have here. So I'm just going to test the workflow and send myself a webhook. What this workflow does is it uh, extracts the information from the webhook, if it has an ID, it tries to cross reference it with a Google sheet and um, gets any potential matches. If it doesn't have an ID, but it has an email, then it does the same operation in the same Google sheet, this time using the email as the key. And if no ID and no email are in the webhook, this means it will return an error. And so we use the stop and error node. Um, then we just send some messages. The whole point of a sub workflow is this lookup would be useful um, in other places, in other workflows than only this one. So what we could do is extract this and replace it uh, by a sub workflow that we would then call from the original workflow. So here I'm going to take all of these nodes, 
I'm going to cut them out and replace them by an execute workflow. For now, we're just going to leave this empty because we need to create the workflow to get the ID. And save this workflow, create a new workflow called lookup. Here, I will paste all of the nodes from earlier and launch the workflow with the execute workflow trigger. One more thing we need to be uh, careful about is the final node. So what I like to do just to make it a little bit easier is drag everything here to have a very clear final node. And then I can get the workflow ID from the URL and heading back to the original workflow. I can now insert this and run the workflow as we did previously. As we see, it had exactly the same output. It did the whole lookup and returned the right contact. So this is very useful when um, we have parts of workflows that we, we might want to execute multiple times. Um, a very important thing to note is before using an execute workflow, make sure to standardize the fields, bring them all back top level, um, just so you don't have any um, trouble using the sub workflow. Um, you can also in the sub workflow, add some documentation with a note, for example, saying, please give me an ID or email field top level. And that way, anyone who wants to use this sub workflow will be able to very easily. Thanks for listening to the fourth video of the advanced course where we covered sub workflows, when to use them and some tips and tricks. In the next video, we'll look into an advanced error workflow.